You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nery here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with our first Let's Play episode of Psychic Connections Quinn's Path. So, after this, all the boys' paths will be wrapped up until the next update, so we will no longer have to start from the beginning to experience everything, because I've got a few things I would like to try out in Quinn's in Quinn's path that I've been curious about. But anyway, guys, without further ado, sit back and let me entertain you for a little while, and let's get right into it, shall we? Let me set Alarm Chan up, boop, boop, and there we go. Alright, let's do it. It feels like I've been driving forever. It's so dark. I can't afford to stop. Could you even see? I can't let myself... You were so tired. If I could just... Bang! <laughs> yep! <laughs> yeah, that what happens. I jolt awake in a sweat, gasping for air. It was just a dream. It's been a while since I had a nightmare about back then. From what I had been told, I was in a car wreck that landed me in a coma for almost two years. When I finally came to, my memory was spotty at best. As time went on, most of what I'd forgotten came back to me. Meanwhile, I underwent about six months of grueling physical therapy. It was hell, but I'd rather that over an extended period in a wheelchair. Thankfully, I was able to get my high school diploma throughout the entire process. With some help, my dad was able to set me up for a college scholarship as a result of my situation. I'm still not sure how I feel about being a charity case, but I don't think I could have expected a full ride anywhere with my grades. Now I've come completely recovered. Now I've completely recovered, save for a scar on the back of my head and nightmares that I barely remember when I wake up. I've officially started college today. The stress of it all is probably why I had that dream again. I was barely awake for orientation yesterday. The trip took too much out of me, so I just crashed when I got back to my room. I should probably check the time. It's an 09. I definitely won't miss waking up early for high school. It doesn't look like I have any new messages from Dad. No surprise there. You'd think he'd have been more worried about his baby boy. Unsurprisingly, it didn't take long for him to return to being a relatively uninvolved parent. The least he could do is tell me if I need to get a freaking job while I'm out there. Now that I'm a bit more awake, I should probably log into the website mentioned at orientation. I would like to know more about his dad. Like, why is his dad not, like, getting in touch with him? Is he just a deadbeat dad, or is it something else? It looks like I need to create an account still. I should have done this yesterday. Oh well, no time like the present. Mason. Chiss. Marshall. Chris Monsanto. <laughs> oh, if you guys don't know what I'm referencing, you guys need to watch Eagle Heart. It is one of the best shows on Adult Swim. I absolutely love it. If you guys have HBO, it's actually every season is free. It's it's a, it's an amazing show. Wow, they already have all my classes listed into a schedule. I barely remember what I signed up for. It looks like I have an English class in a few hours. Yeah, you're gonna get that good bulge, girl. Jeez, I'm getting flooded with sprung page notifications. I guess one of my friends posted an update. It seems like Henry's doing pretty good at his school. He was the only one to reach out to me after I'd woken up. I guess the others felt too awkward to message the coma guy. I was pretty thankful to have him help me catch up on everything I'd missed. I wish I could have gone to his school so that I'd have someone nearby. But I ended up on opposite ends of the country, so I can't really lean on him when I, where I am. He's a junior now, and I'd probably be one, be one too, if not for... I flopped my phone back down onto my bed, letting my eyes stare lazily up at the ceiling. My bare ceiling. It all still feels so surreal. And what had felt like seconds, my entire life changed. My mom and dad had split, and all my friends left while I slept. Friends. It feels so strange not having anyone. I don't know if I can do... Uh, oh! Who could that be? I wonder! Someone's at the door? Huh. 
I guess I better put on some pants and leave the existential crisis stuff for later. Shuffling my jeans on, I moved to open the door, but... <laughs> oh, hey there! You're Mason, right? Uh, can I help you? I'm almost positive I've never seen this girl before, and I don't know how she has a key to my room, but I'm glad I at least got to put pants on before she opened the door. My name's Zoe. I'm the RA for this floor. Just doing my duties and making sure you've moved in all right. Zoe brushes past me, letting herself into my room and begins looking around. Yes, please, just let yourself in. Don't mind if I do. I'm still a bit groggy, so I could be wrong, but I don't think she's allowed to just waltz into my room like this. Looks like you lucked out not getting assigned a roommate. Still a little empty, though, ain't it? I stare at her blankly. I just got here. Did she expect me to have this place decked out or something? She looks at my desk and pats it off as if to dust, as if to dust it before using it as a seat, rather than the chair right next to the desk. Hey, it's your room. Don't sweat it. I'm just pulling your leg. College is a huge step, so don't stress too much, and go at your own pace. Since I'm here, do you have any questions for me? Right. She's a resident assistant. She'd likely know a lot about the campus. Uh, okay. Hmm, well on campus there are a couple spots worth your time. The library is probably the ideal study location. They enforce a strict low volume policy. You mean they do more than loudly shush people? Ha! Huh. Let's just say if you need to check out books for a class or use the media center or print something, I'd recommend staying on the librarian's good side. Sip of coffee real quick. Oh, that's some good coffee. I think the, uh, the name of this particular flavor is Obsidian. It's very strong. It's very good. Wake your ass up in the morning. I question what someone would have to do to justify banning them from using open school resources like the library. But, considering the RAs can just let themselves into dorm rooms, I shouldn't question something like that either. Now, keep that in mind. There are a few plots of grass and a good couple and a couple good running trails all around campus if you're an outdoorsy type. Although, if you do prefer to exercise inside, I'm told we have a pretty good gym. It's usually pretty comfortable most of the time, but it gets packed in the winter months. There's a variety of equipment, and there are some vending machines with low-calorie snacks and supplements. Speaking of food, I think they said something about a dining hall at orientation? Y yeah, though if I'm being honest, I can't recommend the food there yet. You'd honestly be better off getting food from literally anywhere else. It can't be that bad. Well, one of the chefs on the staff is very eccentric. He likes to experiment with the meals. But if you don't believe me, you're free to experience it yourself. Just make sure you record it for me if you do. Personally, I recommend you explore the campus. I don't know much about you, so I can't really speak to where you'd like to go. Oh, are you interested in becoming an RA? I'm not sure, actually. I'm not even really sure what an RA does. But I'm growing more positive you shouldn't have been able to get into my room. To be honest, it isn't anything special. We maintain dorm life and try to assist students with their needs while they live on campus. To simplify, we clean the dormitory building and make sure none of the students have any banned substances. I'd also like to I'd also be your point of contact if you got too inebriated at a party and didn't have a sober driver. Have you ever had to do that before? Only for students that didn't have any other friends to call. If you were interested in being an RA, I can tell you now that you won't be able to become one. Why not? It's a position only held by upperclassmen, so I'm afraid you'd need to be here at least a year, Freshie. Something about being called Freshie feels demeaning, though maybe it's because I'm having trouble looking at Zoe as my upperclassman. Me? Well, I'm a business major with a B-determined minor. I'm hoping to take over my dad's business when he retires, and it seems like a good place to start. What kind of business does he run? It's a sort of support group for individuals with unique needs. Suppose it's part of the reason I picked up being an RA, so I could get more experience interacting with different people. What about you? Where are you here to study? I'm not too sure yet. I figure I'd cover my general education credits while I figured that out. There's nothing wrong with that. You're keeping your options open, which is smart. Just don't be that dumb junior in two years that declares a random major because it seemed doable. Well, if you think of more questions, don't be afraid to ask. It's my job, after all. Hmm, well, you're my last stop today. Zoe motions towards the exit, but she pauses and turns to look straight at me. 
Is there something wrong? No, just... You have interesting eyes. Is she hitting on me? If so, I'm flattered, but she's sort of lacking the main things I like in a guy. Like, being a guy. Um... Thanks? Hey, here's a thought. Why don't you come Why don't you come check out the club fair with me? Uh, beg your pardon? Yeah. It's this big cluster of clubs that try to recruit new members during the first week of each semester. A whole week? Isn't that a little much? Probably, but I'm sure you'll find that a lot of people here take their extra extracurriculars seriously. I'm not so sure. I just got here, and I don't know if joining some club the moment I hit campus is the smartest thing. It can be pretty overwhelming, so I thought it could be I could be your tour guide. Trust me, it's a lot of fun and a great opportunity to meet people too. Why would you want to be my tour guide? Why does anyone do anything ever? I'm always looking for new friends, and plus you're pretty funny, so I think I'd have a good time hanging out with you. You think I'm funny? I don't remember making any jokes. <laughs> That's because you're kinetically funny, and you don't even realize it. I'm... kinetically funny. What does that even mean? It means the things you do are funny rather than the things you say. Like, for example, your fly's been down this whole time. I quickly look down and lo and behold, my fly is not only undone, but, ga but gaping open as if to encourage peeking at my choice of underwear. I grab the zipper and yank it upward. I look up at the panda before me, before me who just snickers. We've been talking for a few minutes and she's now just pointed this out. See? You're kinetically funny. Plus, I hate it when people stay cooped up in their dorm rooms all day when they could be out living life. Like, really, what is there to do inside that you couldn't do with others? I can think of one thing, but after what just happened, I probably shouldn't make that joke, assuming she isn't already thinking that's what I was doing. Zoe is looking at me expectantly. It couldn't hurt to go check out the extracurricular activities, and I don't exactly have a reason to say no here. I guess it'd be fine. Awesome! You won't regret it! Let's get going! In a blink of an eye, she's yanking my arm, pulling me out of my room towards the stairs. It's not until she starts telling me about when she'd gotten lost last week that I start questioning my life choices. This is going to be a long day. The walk to the fair was pretty short. Zoe kept telling me more about campus life and things to look out for. Seriously, frat parties are the worst. By the end of it, everyone's completely shit-faced. Not to mention any guys you meet there are just trying to get in your pants. Really? All of them? Let me say here. No, not all of them, but most of the people I've met at those things were just looking for a quick hookup. Zoe stops for a brief moment and begins looking around us. In an instant, she's running towards one of the tables. I'm standing awkwardly as I watch her go. Should I have followed her, or...? Hey, Mason, get over here! I want you to meet somebody! Ah, there was the guy in the previous playthrough. Aiden, this is Mason. He's a new student, so I thought I'd guide him through the club fair. I see. Well, it's nice to meet you, Mason. The wolf before me extends his hand outward, and I give him mine in turn. His grip is firm, almost stiff. I look him in the eyes, and his gaze meets mine. I don't know if I've ever met someone with more piercing eyes. Aiden here is the president of the student government, and probably the most knowledgeable person here. So he says this proudly, looking at Aiden, and I'd say he looks the part. He almost looks princely somehow, though that might just be because his clothes look like they might be worth more than my phone. Well, I'm sure that's true. I don't think it's fair to boast, given my status. His eyes return their focus on me, but somehow it feels like he isn't necessarily looking at me, but through me. I hope Zoe hasn't been giving you a hard time. She has a tendency to go overboard. Eh. Not at all. Well, I think I understand where he's coming from. I can't say Zoe is anything particularly intrusive. Oh, you know, other than bust into your dorm room. One second, guys. Coffee time. Oh, that is good. That hits the spot. She's been pretty cool so far. Not everyone is willing to help out a stranger, after all. That's certainly true. Maybe she's gotten better at first impressions, then. That's an interesting look. I wonder if Zoe made a bad impression on him when the two had met. If she ever does go overboard, be sure to let me know and I'll put a stop to it. Aiden, Aiden. <clears throat> Aiden, you make me sound like some kind of wild child. To think it was going to be my treat today. Out of the kindness of your heart? I can't believe I never noticed how generous you were, Zoe. 
Not sure what I would have done if you hadn't paid for my coffee today. Why, I'd likely have gone mad. I'm sure you didn't have any ulterior motive for trying to get on my good side today, either. Well, now that you mention it, I just remembered I'd promised to help to help the acapella team set up their table. Mm, so I'm sure you wouldn't mind showing Mason around while I do that. Zoe doesn't even give Aiden a chance to protest. She bolts off deeper into the fair, disappearing into the labyrinth of makeshift stands and people. Wait, did I seriously get dragged out of my room by someone I just met, only to get ditched and left in the care of a complete stranger? <sighs> I need to start reevaluating the choices I make that put me in these situations. She's acting worse than last year. Sorry about her. As I said, she's a bit all over the place. Aiden sighs, but it isn't a normal sigh. Rather, it's the sigh of a broken man forced into similar situations on a regular basis. I pity him. It's time for my break, anyway. So, how about I show you around? Are you really sure you want to spend your break doing more work? It's fine. I need to stretch my legs, anyway. Besides, it would be very unbecoming of me not to support my juniors. Aiden proceeds to guide me through the fair. Occasionally, we stop at a table, and I learn a bit more about some of the clubs. It's pretty knowledgeable when it comes to the involvement and reputation of the various clubs, though that probably comes with being the student government president. So, we've looked at quite a few so far. Any of them catch your interest? I'm not sure. Some of these guys seem a bit... extra. Are you sure none of these are actually cults in disguise? You must watch too many movies. Now, some of the students are just overzealous in their recruiting methods. If there was a cult at the school, I think I'd know. Let's see it right here. Excuse me, do you two have a moment? Uh, sure. Great! I'm, I'm currently looking for new members for our club. Opening personalized emotion networks are open for short. We seek to connect like-minded individuals in finding their inner selves as we shed moral boundaries in our quest towards enlightenment. Uh, what exactly does that entail? I'm so glad you asked! We actually have several information guides in our activities if you're interested. The student hands me a pamphlet detailing several retreats in which members find themselves to remove all doubt from their existence. Um, I'm not sure this is for me, but thank you? I understand. Keep the brochure in case you change your mind. Okay, I think that came off a little more Sean Connery than I was expecting it to. We're a cult. James Colt. No, no, stop. I need to stop that. Just stop. Just stop. Let's just check out the culinary team's table. Aiden leads me over to a line of people chattering away at each other. I count at least a dozen people in front of us. I'm not exactly interested in cooking, though. Maybe we can skip this one and check out a table without a line? <laughs> Don't worry. I doubt anyone in this line is interested in joining the culinary team, either. Then why? The culinary team sells samples of their work in an effort to entice people while also raising funds. So we're just in line to get a bite? Exactly. Jason, the head of the team, made these roasted dumplings last year that were just a die for. The conversation between us naturally ends, and an awkward silence replaces it as we wait in line. The smell wafting from the table up front is beyond enticing. Aiden probably wasn't kidding about how good the food they were serving was. Looking at the wolf next to me, it dawns on me that we've been wandering, around, wandering for a while now, and I still don't really know anything about him. He's mostly just talked about the school so far and elaborated on the history of some of the clubs. He's very kind for giving me this tour, even if it was more or less shoved on him by Zoe. I feel like I should be asking more about him, but I don't even know where to start. I've never had much luck when it comes to talking to attractive guys. So, Zoe seems to have taken quite the interest in you. Huh? Oh, yeah, I guess she has. She was quite insistent on me coming out. Is she like with everyone she meets? No, she's actually pretty reserved with most people, but if she meets someone special, she tends to drop that facade. Really? What makes someone special? Hard to say. I guess some people have a unique quality. If she happens to see that quality in you, you're pretty much stuck with her. A unique quality, huh? It's a bit weird to think someone might act differently around you based on an assumption they have about you. Well, welcome to Interaction 101. <laughs> I don't really even know what Zoe thinks she sees in me, unless I'm supposed to assume Aiden is also kinetically funny. My eyes drift downwards towards where his fly would be. Realizing what I'm doing, I force my eyes back upwards to meet Aiden's gaze. 
It gets me every time. So, has Zoe also seen a unique quality in you? Unfortunately, yes. We met, uh, well, we met while our parents were having a meeting, and she's been stuck to me ever since. Wow, so how long have you two known each other? About ten years, I suppose. So did you two go to high school together then? No, I went to private school while she... Aiden pauses mid-sentence, seemingly catching himself. He stares at me for a moment before he speaks again. Hmm. You're actually pretty sly, aren't you? Trying to learn more about Zoe from one of her friends to raise her chances with her, huh? Wh what No! Maybe I should just correct him and tell him I'm gay. It might be better to avoid confusion. Oh, that is Alarm Chan. Alright guys, I want to thank you so much for watching. This has been a new episode of Psychic Connections, Quinn's Path. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. We're still working on those, still working on those, uh, on those, uh, badges, guys. Don't worry. They should be out before the end of the year. Alright, love you all. Bye-bye!